Greetings and good morning to all of you. I trust it all as well that the Lord is continually blessing you, that you lack nothing, that you are covered in the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, that the spirit of Ruach HaKodesh is flowing in and through your lives mightily, that the heavens are open above you and pouring out blessings upon you, even so that there is no room to receive them all. These are the things that I pray over your life. I just want to take the time this morning to speak on a couple of very important topics, and those things are the importance of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting are two very rudimentary elements in the believer's life. You don't have to be a prophet to pray and fast or you know, you don't have to be in the prophetic ministry for these disciplines to be required of you. It's required of every single believer in the kingdom of God. But more importantly, in the life of the prophet, prayer and intercession, along with fasting, it's like the air that we breathe. It's the veins, the arteries, of the prophet's life. Yea, it is even the lifeblood, the energy that flows through those veins. So without prayer and fasting, there will be no signs, wonders, or miracles wrought in my life or yours. Without prayer and fasting, how can we truly know the mind of God? Yeah, you know, we often, you know, want the Lord to use us and we want God to just do exploits in our lives and we want, you know, our leaders, pastors to call upon us to utilize us. Uh, we want people to recognize the gift that is in us. We wonder why sometimes things are not happening as they should in our lives. And it all goes back to prayer and fasting. Even some hang-ups that you have. Some things that you are struggling with in the flesh. That only you and the Lord know about. Prayer and fasting is the answer. It's the remedy. A lot of us are not ready. We're not ready to be used as prophets. Some of us are in no position to walk in the office of the prophet. And some of us are calling ourselves prophets and it's really not your time yet. You haven't been trained, you haven't been groomed, and you haven't allowed the Lord to deal with you about some of your issues, whether it be anger management, whether it be you know, uh, shoplifting, I don't know, I'm just taking a stab at it, but uh, it could be a host of things, lying, backbiting, gossiping, these things, I know, they sound a little trivial, and they sound like, well, you know, they shouldn't be in the life of a believer, but yeah, these things are in the lives of believers, and there are many other things, such as lust, adultery, uh, Fornication, pornography, masturbation, smoking behind closed doors, drinking behind closed doors. But we want to be used as prophets. Some of you still going to parties or clubs. God can't use you like that. He can't use me like that. He can't use anyone who is not fully and totally submitted to his spirit and to holiness. To living a pure lifestyle. And that's what it's all about. A lifestyle of purity. And what are the two number one components? Notice I said two number one. Because it's number one. But there are two that are coupled together. That will aid us in spiritual purity. And that is prayer and fasting. We don't like to give up food, you know, and 
I tell you, it's sad because in our culture, everywhere you look, there are restaurants. and We don't cook anymore, really. And some of us who do cook, we cook the wrong things or we cook or prepare our foods with the wrong things. And why am I saying all of this? Because what we put inside our bodies will determine our spiritual clarity or dullness. Yes, this is why Yahweh Elohim gave the children of Israel the diet that he gave them. The unclean things that they were to abstain from and the clean things that they were allowed to put inside their temples. Because they were supposed to be a nation chosen, set apart to be an example to the world. A nation that were dearest and closest to his heartbeat, to its pulse. So he could really disseminate information to them that they would be clear and receptive to the revelation that he had for them. It's important as prophets and prophetic people to watch what we eat. And sometimes we got to put the plate down, back away from the table, drop that biscuit, get away from those sweets, abstain from those red meats, white rice and pastas, carbs, all these things that are harmful to our health. Yeah, anything is harmful to your health. You know, if you eat broccoli and carrots in excess, it's going to be dangerous to your health. But all things in moderation. Now, as far as prayer and fasting is concerned, how does that relate to what I put inside my body or what I do not? Because, as I said before, Whatever we put inside us, that's who we are. We become what we eat. You've heard it said, you are what you eat. Well, Yeshua the Messiah, in response to Satan's temptation in the wilderness, right before he went out and ministered, the very first temptation, his response was, man shall not Live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Elohim. So, I just want to encourage you to do what is required of us as believers first. Believers to do. Not as prophets, but believers. And that is to increase and intensify your prayer life and your fasting. Complete fast, whole fast, partial fast. Who came up with these things? Man, man did that. But if you research fasting, that mean or meant and still means that we go without food. We abstain from bread, from meat, from anything dealing with chewing and digestion. We allow nothing except water to enter into our mouths. Well, you may call that a complete fast. No, I call that a fast. To me, that's a basic fast. It's not, you know, we, we've gotten so, we have to be weaned off food. And that's sad as a people. You know, people of God, the kingdom of God, children of the king. We have to be weaned from food. Gradually letting go sweets and uh, letting go carbs and meat. Gradually just weaning away from food. We have to do that now because we have been so gluttonous in our eating habits. But God is trying to get you and me to a point where fasting is second nature. And fasting is more than just going without food. It's going without your favorite food pastime, watching TV, sports, being on the internet, social media, Facebook, the prophet's table, even. Yes. Going to parties, gatherings, games. That's what fasting is about. It's about going without external stimulation. So that only our spirits will be stimulated by the Holy Spirit. 
suppressing and causing mortification of the flesh along with its desires so that our spirit can be alive, can stretch, can expand. You know, fasting and prayer, fasting doesn't move God. It doesn't force his hand. Fasting and praying, it moves us. And it clears our path from debris. It fills up those potholes, drives away the ambush of the enemy, increases our night vision. Yes, it's important to pray and fast. And not just quarterly, not just, you know, once a month, especially prophets. Fasting should be on a weekly basis. Yes, it should. Yes, it should. Whether you go one or two days, it should be on a weekly basis. Yes, it should. For prophets. For believers, you know, I would encourage the same, but a lot of believers can't go without food for a very long time. And it's sad to say. And some of us have medical issues that we we have to eat. And God understands this. For diabetics and uh, those who have uh, high, you know, just all different types of diseases out there, but especially diabetics, you know, we have to eat, you know, I'm not a diabetic, but diabetics have to eat. So even when you have to eat something, there are still things that you can go without. And just because you have to eat doesn't mean you have to eat exactly what your soul desires. All we need is enough to be nourished. That's it. Well, I don't want to sound like I'm fussing or, you know, on my soapbox, but I just want to get that clear, you know, get that through to us this morning because it's so, it's pressing on me because that's the one thing that believers are lacking in so much is prayer and fasting, intercession. We can't stand in the gap. If our flesh is not checked, we cannot stand in anyone's gap for any amount of time if our flesh has not been mortified. Why? Because we're setting ourselves up for failure if we do. It'll be like the seven sons of Sceva. The enemy will look at you and me and say, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. I know this bishop over here or this apostle over there. I even know that teacher over there, but who are you to stand before me and try to block what I have for that guy or that gal over there that you're trying to protect? And he's going to eat us alive. Why? Because we have not armed ourselves. We have not prepared ourselves through the rudimentary, fundamental elements of our walk, and that is prayer and fasting. Yes, it's important, very important. It's high time now that we check our flesh, that we maintain spiritual purity. I cannot stress that enough. Spiritual purity is what God is calling for in these last days. And he's summoning you and me, prophets of the end time, to get it together. He's calling us into the throne room. When God calls us, he does not want to see you and me in the flesh. Because no flesh can stand before the almighty God. wants our spirit our soul but it's got to be that we want to be in the presence of God if we want the best out of the Lord God then we must do what is required of us he gave his life on the cross for our sins he paid the full price 
of our iniquities. Our reasonable service is to fast and pray. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace.